Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hi, this is Celine Williams hosting from Ontario for Canada's podcast. My guests today are Belinda Gilby and Aaron Gravens, co-founders of Bondi Energy, which specializes in decarbonizing buildings with heat pump retrofits for multifamily and commercial buildings across North America. Aaron is also the owner of Titan York Realty. Welcome, Belinda and Aaron. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Um, So as we always kind of get started with these uh, podcasts, I'm going to ask each of you to tell me a little bit about your uh, journey as entrepreneurs, both individually and then how you came together. Because Aaron, it definitely sounds from even just that intro, obviously you were doing your own thing prior or in conjunction with. So if each of you could just tell me a little bit of your story, um, that would be great. And you can decide amongst yourself who goes first. Sure, Aaron, why don't you, you want me to start? No, you start start. and then I'll go. You started your first company first. All right, so uh, I own a commercial real estate brokerage. And uh, a big part of understanding real estate is understanding value and how landlords uh, assign value, how lenders lend money based on value to, 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 to owners of buildings and, and how those, how, and, and, and we, we own buildings, we manage buildings, and we also uh, we represent also tenants of the marketplace that, that lease space and buildings. So um, in, one of my, in one of the assets that we were evaluating, we were looking to understand how to change the heating system. And I went through this entire process of trying to find someone. And uh, uh, Belinda shows up in my building and uh, to look to install heat pumps. And we start talking. And Belinda worked for a very large uh, HVAC company. She can talk about it herself and, and where she came from. And Belinda started asking me a whole lot of questions. And I'm like, what's up? What do you want to know? And by the time she was, we were done talking, I said, okay, let's start a business. And that was three years ago. And we both took a flyer and really, you know, didn't know each other and started something that has grown exponentially. And, and we are, you know, you'll, you'll find from it that we're very different people. Um, but together we are very powerful in what we're doing. And it's been an incredible partnership. And I'm, I'm going to pass on to Belinda because um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm the, I'm an older guy that that's been in business for a long time. And Belinda is different from that, but Belinda is the superstar and, and anyone that, that would be part of this conversation will know that she is the president in, in every way that you can imagine in terms of understanding on how to p- apply this application and managing a company. And, and she's going to make, uh, everyone in Ontario and Canada proud. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, proud to be her uh, partner. So I'm, I'm passing on to Belinda. Thanks, Aaron. Um, he likes to talk me up, I feel, but we're <laughs> a good team. We're a good, a good partnership. And I couldn't have done this without Aaron um, full stop. But um, yeah, I guess from my perspective and how we got started, Aaron mentioned I was working for a large HVAC company. Um, you know, I studied mechanical engineering at the University of Ottawa. Um, you know, following in my dad's footsteps, he was also a mechanical engineer. And when I graduated, uh, I decided I didn't actually want to be an engineer. I wanted to get into the business side of things in the world and um, realized a good way to do that and to learn a lot about business was to get into sales. So I got into technical sales, working in the renewable energy industry first, um, did well in that role for a few years, then jumped to a new company in HVAC, um, also in technical sales. So Um, In that space, I was working with customers that owned buildings and wanted to make them more efficient. And that's sort of where I identified this this problem in the market and um, the solution to that being heat pump retrofits. So in this capacity as, you know, technical sales engineer selling HVAC equipment, um, saw a problem, saw a solution, and sort of was spearheading what we're doing now with Bondi within that organization. And sort of thought, okay, there's something here. I think that I would like to focus just on this. You know, I see this huge opportunity in the market. Um, Yeah. And then long story short, I showed up one day to one of Aaron's buildings that he owns and operates and was pitching him on this same solution. 
you know, we're talking about ideas, um, you know, Aaron being on the flip side of it, also being a customer, he understood the value and the value prop of what I was trying to sell. And I remember distinctly, he looked at me and he said this one question that, you know, put me on this different trajectory. And he said, Belinda, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I looked at him like, okay, who is this guy? Why is he asking me this question? But I said, you know what? I would love to own my own company one day. That's definitely what I'm working towards. You know, when I think about my future in the long run. And he said, yeah, I think you have some good ideas here and you should quit your job and start a company and um, let me know how I can help. So that was a yeah, transformative day in you know my career. And I went back and I spoke to my friends and my my family. And I said, look, you know, I, I want to do this. Here's this guy. He wants to invest, wants to help start a company and be involved. And or should I do it? And it's kind of this moment where a door opens and you have to walk through it. If that's what you, if that's the path you want to take in life, you have to see the opportunities and take the jump. And it was scary. You know, I was doing really well in the role I was in, you know, um, making good money. I'm in a comfortable position, but this was a new adventure and a door that opened and Aaron opened it and I walked through. And here we are three years later, doing well yeah. and having fun. Yeah. Very cool. I love the, um, I love the clarity that you had Belinda around at some point you want to run your own business and the gumption you had Aaron to just be like, I see something in you. Let's try something. That's a pretty cool combination up front. No, we're, we're, we, we've made a really good team in, you know, um, prior to the pushing record, um, we were talking about what happened. We started just before the, the, the pandemic and then all of a sudden March hit and Belinda showed up and we were at our office every day while everyone else was at home um, because we were allowed to. Brokerage kind of allowed to be in our offices. And we, uh, we, we, it was the most inventive, creative time of our lives were in that period of time trying to start the business. We didn't know. No one, no one really, uh, we're really kind of first through the door uh, in what we're doing. There aren't many people that are doing this. In, in the way that we're doing it. Um, and we kind of had to reset the market and reset the tone. And we knew that what the demand was for it. And uh, we knew what language we had to speak to the customer in order to have them see that retrofitting with heat pumps was the right thing to do, to decarbonize, to increase value for buildings. So we had to, we, we've, we've set the market and, and, you know, between the two of us, we're just, we're setting a new tone for how, Canada is going to decarbonize in, in one very specific way. So that's, it, it's a lot of fun. So for those of us who, you know, for example, don't really understand what a heat pump is or what the importance of this might be or why this matters, because for sure there are going to be people listening who are like, I mean, I've heard the word heat pump, but why should I care about this? What it like, so what can you tell me and the listeners a little bit about what this means, why this matters, why they should be interested in this. Sure. Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, you know, why does it matter and why should we care? And it has to do with carbon emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, and climate change at the end of the day. So um, buildings are the second biggest contributor for greenhouse gas emissions behind only transportation. So you have cars on the road, trucks on the road, and then you have buildings. So buildings typically heat their space by burning natural gas or fossil fuels, either burning oil, burning gas for your furnace or a boiler system in a big building. So it's a huge contributor. And if we're going to, you know, reach our climate um, targets and GHG reduction targets, we're going to have to decarbonize buildings, meaning getting them off of gas and heating them with a carbon free electrified uh, heating technology. So that's what a heat pump is. You know, we talk about solar, renewable energy, you know, generating power from renewable sources. We talk about driving electric vehicles, but heating buildings with heat pumps is a central part of that whole equation. So that's what we do. We go into buildings, um, we reduce their energy load for heating by putting in heat pumps as the new heating system. And then there's also um, the flip side. And a heat pump is basically an air conditioner that can work in reverse and also do heating. So you're either rejecting heat outside, which cools the space, or you're bringing heat inside, which heats the space. 
So a lot of our projects are working in older buildings that don't have central air conditioning. So while we're going in and putting in more efficient heating, it's also having the benefit of putting in cooling. So yeah, that's that's why it's important and that's why it matters. And I, I, go ahead. So I can, I can add to that. You've, everyone has seen a heat pump before. It's sort of like a square box that sits outside of, of, of a house and it pipes into each of the rooms. And then there's sort of a unit on the wall of each room. So if, you, if you're wondering what, you, what a heat pump is, you've seen it a million times in your life. It, it, it passed it by. It's not a new technology, but the technology has really come a long way for colder climate. It's interesting because I think of what did, I, I'm going to use it. I swear a term that probably my parents use, but those like shaker style air conditioners, whatever they're called, the the ones that sit at the top of the wall and they whatever. They, anyways, those when I was, I assume is a version of that because I know from my family that lives in Europe that they mm-hmm. have ones. We probably do too. I just haven't seen them here that they use in the summer for cooling and in the winter for heating as an additional source of heat for the house. It's, it's basically that is what we're, is a version of that, maybe smaller, whatever. But if people are familiar with those, that would be similar to what you're talking about, I assume. Yeah, that's exactly it. They're really popular all around the world. See them everywhere in Europe, Asia, South America, Australia, even in the U S and Canada, the East Coast um, has a lot of heat pumps installed. Um, Ontario, specifically, and you know the Northeast U.S., it's getting there. They're being installed more and more. But yeah, super popular all over the world, and that's it, largely for cooling. But to Aaron's point, um, the technology has come so far that it can provide heating even in really cold climates, like we are here in Canada. And, and Selena, so, you know, at the beginning, before everyone came on, you know, we start talking about this stuff, and people's eyes glaze over. So I, I, I'm trying to avoid that. Um, those wi- those window rattlers that you see in a window, um, a heat pump. So we, we call it, let's say it's an apartment and a two bedroom apartment would be three zones. So two bedrooms and a little living area. And you would have one of those units in a window. The heat pump could be in all three rooms and will be t- it to, pr- to provide air conditioning. It'll be 25% more efficient than one of those window rattlers that are sitting in one of those windows. So it really is efficient. And probably a lot quieter than some of those window those window yes. uh, for <laughs> if you ever had to sleep in a and room with one of those. Off. And don't fall off and kill people. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of lots of benefits. Um, so it, Bondi Energy is about three years. You said 2019, three-ish years old at this point. So what have been um the biggest challenges that you have had and what have been the biggest wins and successes you've had. Um, And this can be whether it's together because it's all partnerships are always complex and interesting in and of themselves or individually in roles or as a company, whatever the case may be. It's kind of a broad question. Yeah, I think um, maybe Aaron has some ideas to share, but just the fact that we've gone from zero to one has been a huge achievement. You know, you have an idea um, about what a company could look like or just creating a company. And one day, you know, back in 2019, it was just an idea and just Aaron and I sitting in an office together. And then now three years later, it's a real company with big clients and um, really impressive revenue numbers and a team behind us that's growing and it's real. And, you know, just turning an idea into something real is a huge accomplishment and is something that we're both proud of and, you know, we're proud of the team we built um, around us because we couldn't do it without, you know, strong employees. But yeah, I think that's the biggest achievement, just going from zero to one and taking that first step and, and seeing it come together. You know, there's been lots of challenges. Every day is a challenge. Every day you get thrown a curveball. you know, whether that's a deal you thought was going to go through and then has a setback or, you know, taking 12 to 18 months to get a contract with a client you've been trying to sell for so long because these are we typically have long sales cycles it's a complex high value contract that we're getting and it can take a long time to get the deal with a lot of challenges along the way um but yeah every every day is a curveball you know in construction we're in the construction business you know it's 
every day a problem will pop up. I'll give you an example. Um, so in our building, sometimes we have to make holes in the wall and, you know, there can be asbestos in the wall. So we want to do the engineering and make sure we know where the asbestos is so that we can drill safely. And, you know, we get an engineering report to tell us that it's here, but it's not here. And then, of course, we drill into the wall one day where there is supposed to be no asbestos and then vermiculite starts pouring out. So it's like, OK, we have to solution this problem, plug the hole, bring in another team. And it's every day is like this in the construction world where you're just getting thrown curveballs and having to solution stuff on the spot and, you know, figure out what to do. You know, I think in the very beginning, I was so nervous that someone was going to steal our idea. And we were, we were, we yeah, were both really nervous. Yeah, like we, we so hard, right? Like really nervous. Like, oh, we, you know. But then as we started doing our business and growing, we realized that what the, what the customer wanted was the service delivery to ensure that in the trust that we're going into buildings, it's going to get done right. It's going to get done. You know, it's not easy. It's not like, oh, you walk in and just go ahead and put in some HVAC. Like there's a... a you, you, you missed the second part of that. You started drilling, Belinda, and then the brick came out, and then you had to cover off the entire ground floor with make sure that no one would get hurt after. It, 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 so, so we're good at that. We, we can see that happening. I, I think, um, I think I can tell you that from from my perspective, I'm blown away. I've spent twenty something odd years building an old economy business. I mean, you know, in in, in the in the real estate business, it's not something you know. I would like to say, hey, I'm the best at it, but it doesn't, it's been done before for thousands of years. This is like a dot, this is like a, a tech company starting off with these insane uh, uh, um, increases in, 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 uh, in learning curve. Like we're, we're creating the market as we go. And uh, it's just been, you know, we wake up every morning out of bed running and, and we love it because we're able to, really change like we know we're changing the world we know it's fine it's been it's been amazing and we've learned a lot like there's every single day we've had to learn about energy in 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 all kinds of forms from its generation to its capacity from the transformer down the street to the building and the challenges that face policymakers as it relates to things like hey we want you to go to net we want to go net zero we want to electrify all the buildings well the buildings can't electrify because they don't have enough capacity. And then mm. the utility providers are not in line with the governments. And I'm not talking about Ontario. I'm talking nation, you know, across North America. But in, 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 so we, we're, we're trying to be, own the problem, these massive big idea problems that no one can understand and no one has any solutions to. We're like, oh, we're going to own that problem. And we're going to put out a think piece on that, how to solve it. And, not just solve it in Ontario, but solve it across North America. And, and you know, we, we've we've looked at it and said, well, we're going, to, we're expanding. And about a year ago, we sat, Belinda and I sat down. We said, okay, what are we going to do? How, what is our? I know we're starting off, but what's our expansion going to look like? And you know, Ontario's home core. We know we could do well in Ontario. Where else we're going to go? So we expanded to the U.S. and we're getting our first pilot projects in Illinois. And we're getting our big orders in Michigan. And now we're doing New York. And, you know, to give you context, the Ontario market, Illinois market are pretty similar. Michigan's are smaller. The New York market's like 10 times the size of these markets. So we're now, you know, this, this when, when people start waking up and seeing what we're doing and, and catch on to Belinda to see, you know, to see us really pushing forward. You know, Belinda is a, is, is a female uh, uh, president of an HVAC energy company expanding across North America. That's that's that 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 itself is amazing. So we're we're really we're, we've got a good long run, and and, uh, and we're, you know we're learning every day. This is, this is where we're coming. So I'm curious because you didn't know each other before you started this business, really, right? It was fairly. Um, it's not like you had been friends for years or had tried all these other things together, which is often what happens in partnerships. So I'm curious how you ha how you found, and actually, Aaron, I'm going to ask you a quick question before I ask this. Do you have a business partner in your realty business or is it you as the head of it? I do not have a business partner in this business. I have partners with other things, but not in my main business. Okay. Yeah. So 
because it sounds like Bondi is, is, you know, growing really quickly is going to be a, you know, a big company. So how has it been having a business partner? What have, what have you, Aaron, maybe from the perspective of having a business partner in a different way than you've had before, what has worked for you? What have been some of the challenges? I ask this because we get asked all the time about partnerships, right? Like what is easy about them? What's the benefit of them? What's hard about them? And it's always interesting, I think, especially with your relationship, because husband and wives are going to have a different experience of working together than friends, than people who come together for a business, which is what the two of you've done. I think, um, I think for me, I understood um, my strengths and my weaknesses and my desires of what I wanted to be. So I'm an alpha, always talk too much, occup- uh, suck up the oxygen, uh, uh, solution, pick up the phone, dial, just, you know, always that. And, and, and Belinda knows. Um, and I said to Belinda very early on, I said, look, I've already been the president of the company. Um, I don't need to be the president of this company. I want, you, like, this is our partnership. You know, you're the president. And, um, and I, and I have a, I have a saying that, that she's heard over and over again. And so have my other partners too, and other things that I've done. But I, I defer to my partner that I trust in Belinda and she trusts in me. And I think that's been like, um, one of the most powerful things between us, like, that there are, um, We've never had a conversation about money. Never. Uh, whatever Belinda wants, fine. If I want something, fine. There's never a, um, we don't, we don't always agree. Um, and I may not agree with her, but I will always defer to her because she's the president. I had to, and, and I think that was a very important part of setting the tone between us. And, um, and, and look, <laughs> there are times when Belinda's like knocked in the door, like, oh my God, what do we do? And other times when I knock in the door, like, what do we do? Like, we, we solution everything, right? Together. Um, um, I'm, I'm very frenetic. Belinda is extremely controlled. I mean, I, how do I, I, we sit in a room with it, with maybe, or a Zoom call with, Five white males over 45 who are in real estate, have been in their business for, you know, their entire life and know everything about everything. And in walks Belinda on a call. And by the time the call's over, they're like, yeah, she's the one. She's, she knows it. It's absolutely. Like the, and, and there's this extreme level of trust that uh, the clients put in Belinda. And I think there's a, in, um, we, I, I know it from, you know, growing up and being president of, of one company, um, you know, there, there's an Elton John issue, you know, when they, when, when, when they ask for Elton John to show up, Elton John's got to show up. So Belinda's got to show, right? Like that, they really, it really is a, um, a cornerstone of the trust. And, and we've done really well by that. Like they, they, they understand that she's just uh that we're, we're going to come through and and, I, and belinda doesn't do it alone like i don't want you to think that like we have seven people behind us plus another three other support and we're growing fast and we do things all together and we have uh Mallow mckay and you know helping our growth and she's amazing and you know it's not all landing on Belinda, but you know she she'll be the first to say that that you know that would break her um but you know, she really is setting a direction. So, so yeah, the, the, the partnership has been. I respect her. She respects me, and I've, I've, uh, you know, the, the the roles are very defined. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, just to second a few things that Aaron said, it's, um, it's important to, and again, I don't have the experience of starting a a business by myself or a different business with other partners. You know, this is the first business I'm st- I've started, and Aaron's my business partner. But I recognize that it's super important to have a partner that complements your, um, you know, your skills and your deficiencies and together you're stronger, right? So, um, Aaron is skilled at talking to anyone and solutioning problems and thinking big picture and looking around the corner and, 
you know, knowing, um, you know, where we're going to have challenges and thinking about what could go wrong. And, you know, I'm more reserved and more of, uh, you know, figuring out how to solution specific problems and maybe more tunnel vision on, you know, minutia. But, you know, together we've um, been successful. And that's really important in a partner is to have someone that complements your strengths and weaknesses. And secondly, trust is huge. Aaron and I trust each other wholeheartedly. I trust him with my life and vice versa. We're really family at this point, but there's mutual respect and trust there that we have each other's backs and we um, have each other's best interests at heart. And, you know, my successes are Aaron's successes and vice versa. So um, we're really a team in that regard. And we don't butt heads too often. We don't butt heads at all. Even if we disagree, um, we can come to a resolution. Um, Thank you for sharing that. I think it's really, I appreciate the perspective and I think it's incredibly important for people listening and, and viewers watching this to understand that, that, you know, respect and trust are paramount to any successful partnership. Um, and it's really clear from both of you that that is the foundation here and everything is, you know, gets built on there. And I think, you know, Belinda, to what you said around balancing each other's strengths and weaknesses out slightly different language, but that's another, that's another thing that's really important when thinking of a partnership. If it, the more we can find someone and work with people who aren't the exact same as us and are actually different, the better and more successful we end up being. And I think that's, it's really evident yep. that the two of you have found a synergy there. That's not because you are the same person and that's really cool. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so I want to thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. This has been really interesting. I think uh, I think the people listening, not only your story of founding Bondi, but the two of you together and what Bondi does, which is really cool. And everyone can check them out at BondiCore.com or Bondi Energy Core is on their socials. The links will be in the show notes. Um, I think it's a really cool place for them to go and and learn more about what the business does and what you're up to in the world um, after hearing your story, because it's been really, it's a really interesting story. So thank you for sharing it with me. Our pleasure. Thank you, Thanks for having us, Celine. Absolutely. And for those who are listening, thank you for listening to Canada's podcast. Like, comment, and subscribe to all our channels to get the latest podcasts from entrepreneurs across Canada.